everybody! Oh my gosh, we are so excited to see everybody again. Um, I feel like I do, <gasps> I've got an intro. Let you want you want the official intro? Does the thought of is. does the thought of story time make your eye twitch? Does picturing yourself at a library or a bookstore make your stomach turn? It's okay. You're not alone, and there is a better way. I'm JT Eve. This is my co-host, Hunter Blue. And this is Pick Again, How to Survive Reading with Your Children. We understand that the children in your life have terrible taste in literature, and the next book they pick could be the one they want to read over and over again. We're here to help you avoid the books likely to bring on anxiety attacks before it's too late. That's it. That, that's the intro. We're introed. Yay! <laughs> oh my gosh, how's everybody doing today? What's up, Hunter? Tell me about I your mean... last three weeks of life in which we've been away preparing for this moment. For this, this moment. This right here. Um, it's been good. I, um... Gosh. I'm trying to think of things i really can't think of too much going on um i mean i just went to the bathroom and i had a very teary child Aww. like demand that i hold him while i was in the bathroom and the cat that um, does that like tears down his face and he was feeding he was eating he was munching on a, a pretzel and he he ate half and then he stuck the rest in my mouth and i was like thanks that doesn't reach your life you're raising a sharer. That's what's important. <laughs> right? Yeah. So. <laughs> but other than that, um, yeah, I can't really think of any any amazing things that have happened lately that I, what what's going on in the world, things, too many things, too many things. And so I can't, I can't remember nothing. There's a lot of things going on. I do feel like maybe we should be um, dedicating this episode to Michaela Bryant. Micaiah. Micaiah Bryant. Micaiah Bryant. Michaela. Micaiah. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, it's really important to stay abreast of, of all the things that are happening just because Derek Siobhan got got his, uh, his guilty sentence doesn't mean that everything stops, you know. There are still so. black people being murdered all around us. And as much as it hurts, we do need to remember them and um, not let it go. Yeah. Pick again, police I mean, departments. Pick, pick again. <laughs> as in pick new officers, not pick new targets to murder. In case that was unclear. By yeah. Yeah. Make sure. Crystal, whose side Crystal we're on Clay. here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess mm. the, the, the excitement that's been going on is we've got huge tech upgrades going on up in here um yeah i i don't maybe you can't see it on the other side but i bet you can if you go back like two episodes ago night and day night, night and day. day actually i was just looking at the preview one and i am like i'm like a red cherry tomato and i was like well this is nice <laughs> I like this. We look better. We sound better. Um, Y'all can hear and see us almost in real time, which is how it's supposed to be. Um, so there's the, that. The good Lord intended. Um, yeah. We've got I'm some... working on things. Oh, that's the thing that we've been doing. I, I mean, I don't know why we've... Okay, we've had our own channels. Oh, we yeah. were on our... We're expanding. <laughs> our empire is growing. In addition to all our cool new graphics... Yeah, we we um while we were taking our sabbatical to kind of get our tech worked up, we um we both um worked on our own channels and trying to get um things set up. So um I'm learning OBS Studio and that's fun. And I've got I'm Streamlabs playing... going over here, which is new and um okay, so admittedly a giant pain in our ass, but we did figure it out, um, you know. Yeah. Just now, so that's awesome. And you know, we've and got the... we've got all sorts of shit going on. Yeah, we got video games on my channel. I'm playing The Witcher, which is totally not for kids at all in any way, shape, or form. I guess this show this isn't is really for, for kids, kids in any way. Shape, Nothing or form, we but... do is for children. Let's be real here. Right. We uh... are dirty mouth sailors. 
this is our break. Well, this is Hunter's break from children. My life is a break from children, so I don't even know how to approach them, right? So, uh, and then, uh, and then you do amazing stuff with your bearded dragon. Now, um, we wanted to introduce everyone to Falcor today, but as you can see, um, uh, you can't even see him. He's that camouflaged blob in there because the little bastard has <laughs> buried himself in his dirt there. Um, and so he's just like put leaves on top of himself and is hiding hardcore. Um, so today he may not make an appearance beyond this. I mean, yeah, it, you know, bearded dragons, they, whenever they feel like they'll come out. I kept getting mixed up, though, and telling everyone that you had a Komodo dragon, and people were like, wow, what? that's <laughs> a big deal. That would and be a I big was deal. like, is it? Yeah. No, he's, he's, he's not a Komodo. He's, he's, he's only this big, but, you know, he's impressive in his own right, damn it, and one day you'll get to see him. Right. Maybe just right. not today, but it's fine. It's cool. <laughs> But we've got all this um, tech going on. Um, so Falky has been, um, yeah, he's been on my channel. But I think we're gonna we're gonna start playing some games too. We're gonna go all out. Um, I've discovered stream. I've been given access to a whole library of somebody else's shit, and I'm going hog wild. So that Steam account having a Steam account is a big deal. It's no, a big having someone else's Steam account is a big deal because it came with all these games and I'm like, wow. Some most of them I never played, most of them I never will play, but a couple of them I'm like, "Oh my gosh, I love this game." And others are like, "Oh my gosh, I've always wanted to play this game." So we're witching over on Hunter's channel. So if you like The Witcher for now, I mean for the foreseeable future, what are we on? Day sixteen that we just finished. Yeah, we're on our we're on our sixteenth uh, stream, and it's roughly about fifty to sixty hours of of gameplay that we've already put in. So you know, start now, catch up, join us. You have There's to. There's lots of yeah. You can if you want to just sit at home <laughs> and dedicate yourself to the next fifty hours of catching up to The Witcher. Welcome, or. Yeah. You just know, jump you in where we are. As long as okay. you're also a nocturnal being, because we mostly have been playing Witcher in the nighttime hours. In our nighttime hours, in other people's hours, it's like, well, yeah, you know, I mean, other people. Morning, I don't know. Who knows? The the world's a big place. Who knows what time it is for you? For us, it's been nighttime because right. we've been playing when the kids are sleeping. Right. So and we stop when they start crying because that's just how that works. <laughs> <laughs> it's true there is a baby timer uh yeah if there if there's a crying baby that's usually when it's time to wrap it up but he he gives us a lot of time i think he gives us a lot of of leeway to, we've to definitely play, so. had some five hours play in a go i mean we break yeah. we take breaks um that's something I, I didn't create a we're taking a break slide for this channel i'm probably gonna have to because you know sometimes it happens but between the two of us sometimes. One of us or the other of us seems to always be here to entertain. Well, two hours is, is nothing compared to the five that we do. <laughs> yes, so. It's true. But, you know, we are concerned about everyone's hydration. And yeah. dowels and whatnot. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, I guess are we ready? This is also a special week because we have not actually both even read all of the books that we're reading today. This is a blind pick. So we'll see. Um, so it could go any way. We don't know what's happening. Um, one thing we were... So the the theme of the week is comebacks because we've come back. Baby, come back. We return. Boop. So boop, boop, boop. that is what we are focusing on. Um, our first book today is The Hungry Thing Returns by Jan Slepian and Ann Seedler, illustrated by Richard E. Martin. This came out in 1993, um, and an interesting thing I learned about this is that um, this author's, I don't know about Ann Seidler, but Jan Slepian did graduate work in clinical psychology and speech pathology, and these books are made, like it's part of a series called the Listen Here books that is meant to teach phonetic awareness to young readers. So there's, like, science happening behind it. There's a whole lot of, like, 
this is helping your kids' brains grow in ways that just only doctors could come up with. So, for that, for so sure. there's that. So let's just jump right on in over here and let's start. One day, the hungry thing came into the schoolyard. He carried a small hungry thing on his back. I like that the hungry thing has another hungry thing. I like that nobody, like, that they're like, oh, that's a hungry thing. They're not like, what the fuck is that? That is a big, pink, almost like, looks like there's bumpy shit on them. Like, what is that? Well, I guess to be fair, this is the hungry thing returns. There was a previous right. book in which the hungry thing arrived, where we I'm don't know assuming the... that they worked all that out. <laughs> right, right. There's canon that clearly we didn't follow on, so I guess that's understandable. Yeah, maybe because I, I'm assuming that these hungry things didn't write their own signs. I, I who knows? It's unclear, but they're cute as fuck. I know that much. I really like these hungry things. Um, they're and, adorable. But... And I like that there's a little one. You have four fingers. How do you, how do you write with four fingers? I mean, you know what? Done. You find some four fingered people, and I bet they tell you that they do it just fine. Boom. But yeah, I'm more just worried about the length of their arms, <laughs> their ability to like <laughs> right maneuver a pen They're and paper. They're having a hard time already. Kind of little. Do that. They're dinosaur esque. The hungry things are dinosaur esque. They are. They are cute as hell, though. They are pink, and there's a little baby one. How can you really... How, how can you really you can say anything about better? That. Out of the school came the headmaster, the teachers, and all of the children. They gather around the hungry thing. So clearly it's not like... It's not an everyday occurrence. Oh, but it's not right. so fucked up that they're running around like... They're scared. No one got a knife. There's this kid no down one... here. He's um, looking at a frog. He's not even looking at the hungry thing. Right. There's the one over there playing the a dog. dog. Yeah. Yeah. So it's exciting, but it's not like totally novel. They know what's up. They've seen this before. Look at the up teachers. They're hilarious. <laughs> I love that that I one's wearing a chef's it. hat. <laughs> I wonder if he's the headmaster or <laughs> the teacher's. This is some Hogwarts fuckery here because, like, I don't know if everyone being in elementary school be down with like these people. They're they're a little little peculiar looking. Well, look at the children course, though. Like, so, I, I was going to say, then again, these kids got wizard robes, and they're clearly homemade and yeah, they're well worn. Uh huh. There's some patchwork going on. This kid got this girl got fishnets. Yeah, she does. <laughs> And they're like purple and yellow and beautiful hair. I would, I, I would love that hair. Personally. I mean, it's, that's it's... some full hair. And this kid over here's got Uggs. <laughs> it's got something. <laughs> it's the... Petting frogs wearing Uggs. Yeah. I mean, th these people are living their best life. I don't know why I was. No, I okay. Accepted. Yeah, they're they're down. All right, let's see. The hungry thing pointed to a sign around his neck. It said, feed me. The small hungry thing pointed to her sign. It said, me too. What would you like to eat? Asked the headmaster. Flamburgers, said the hungry thing. Flamburgers, cried the school cook. Dear me, let me see. How do you eat them? What can they be? Um, Flamburgers. Flamburgers. I love that, you know, that their signs go together. The feed me, me too. <laughs> I love that these headmasters look like they're up to some shady fucking shit. Oh, that they are conspiring to cut this thing up and eat it. That's what I'm... These are some shady ass looking people. No doubt. Again, like that guy, his like face is like so sunken in to all his wrinkles that you can't even tell what's happening with him. I like that. <laughs> like <laughs> it's ridiculous. One wrinkle or two. <laughs> like closing in on the face. And this kid over here, 
I see I see yellow and blue striped socks. Man, what's this kid fighting? Is this a That's gotta be a hedgehog. Damn. Right? It's got it looks hedgehoggy to me. It's These really kids big. Have no white magic that they're just talking and touching yeah, any All of the animals are their friends, man. Rabies doesn't exist in this world. Uh-uh. Alright. I mean, we don't know if the hunger thing, what a flamburger. I wonder what a flamburger could be. I think there's like ham. I want to say it's ham and flesh. <laughs> yes, ham flesh. Human, human flesh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yes. Allow me, said the teacher. Flamburger, I think, are piles of spaghetti you can eat in a sink. Not so, said the headmaster. Flamburgers, I know, are chocolate chip sprinkles that grow in the snow. Chocolate chip pickles that grow in the snow. I now question the intelligence of all these teachers. No kidding. They just... And what is up with this sink? The sink appears to be alive. It is alive. Um, that is a hell of a thing. And those could be little beardy dragons in there. See, that's why spaghetti. nobody, everyone's like, oh, hungry things. Yeah, they come out every once in a while because we've got these. All these uh, other monstrosities. Uh, noodle slurpers here. Uh, in my pasta, I constantly find a noodle <sighs> slurper in my pasta. And I'm like, it's fine. I'm just tripped out on opium anyway. So <laughs> Chocolate chip pickles. <laughs> and then yeah, this chocolate chip pickles shit. And there's uh there's an ogre there. There's an ogre and, and uh I don't know, it's a mole maybe? It looks like a mole because Kinda. it has the little thingies little touch thingies that it needs. But I... aren't they blind? You know, so I I don't know if that's a but they need those things to feel. Yeah, stuff. that and is for sure. And chocolate apparently you find chocolate chip pickles that aren't pickled because they grow that way. I'm a peanut butter and pickle person, so chocolate chip pickles are not that, like, out of there. <laughs> I mean, I could I could talk with that. That's fine. Oh, but you'd have to go to the snow to pick them. Yeah, they're cold, which makes sense because you don't want the chocolate to melt. If they were hot, if they were any other temperature, if they were room temperature... The, the the chocolate chips would melt. Would so, you really want to eat this, a room temperature pickle? This is facts. Facts are facts. I mean, I'm I will eat a pickle. Yeah, I'll eat a warm pickle. I'll eat Ugh. a cold pickle. I will eat pickles in a box. I will eat pickles in some socks. Okay. All right. You're too into it. Let's move on. <laughs> a child raised his hand. I think said the boy flamburgers sound like ramburgers sound like hamburgers to me of <gasps> course said the headmaster he told the cook to bring some the hungry thing and the small thing ate them all up the hungry thing pointed to his sign that said feed me the small thing pointed to his sign that said me too what would you like to eat asked the headmaster Belly jeans, said the hungry thing. Belly jeans, cried the cook. Dear me, let me see. How do you eat them? What can they be? Yeah, definitely these kids are way smarter than these teachers. Yes, and fuck this bird. This over-entitled bird that thinks that he can he just, just take a, a whole hamburger. Flamburger. F you, bird. These kids are trying to like help out. And they're like, don't take these oh, fucking bird. You don't have a sign. You didn't ask. You didn't specify yeah. your needs. Yeah. It's out of control. And by the way, belly jeans are clearly little tiny bellies that hang over little tiny jeans. <gasps> and you just nom nom on them. I have one of those. I've eaten a couple of those. I mean, no, I just I just have one of those. <laughs> I have a belly hanging over some jeans right now. They're, they're tasty. Nom nom nom. And Remind me to find the garter belt for the next time we hang out. Just okay. in case. <laughs> You're not getting my belly jeans. Or something. I don't know. My these belly jeans are for me. <laughs> okay. okay. Belly jeans. Be jelly bean is not my lover. 
But of course, said a teacher, belly jeans, I've read, are small little pancakes you wear on your head. Belly jeans are rare, said the headmaster. They are handled with care when eaten by dragons in a long underwear. Um, uh, no, I'm going to call bullshit on both of your theories, you dumbasses, because who wants to eat head pancakes? And where did you Look read the about these alleged these head pancakes? These are overpaid teachers. For sure. Look at that gold, gold, gold that finery. <laughs> on the, auda the audacity to just wear square little pancakes on. They're not square little pancakes. They are big ass That is, pancakes. Yeah, that is a big pancake. That's, I mean, it's, it's a hat. It's a hat cake. What is this man reading and how is he teaching children? And... You know, why do he's the he's the gym teacher. <laughs> if you can't get any more impractical <laughs> <laughs> twenty laps. Yes. yes, as I eat my head pancake. <laughs> <laughs> and um see. this rare eaten by dragons in long I would love to see some dragons in long underwear. I mean I mean being the owner of a dragon, good fucking luck getting that on him. But, you know. Right. Seems like it would just shred. It, it just seems it, like he would bite you and run away is what would happen. <laughs> and so, these, these guys would just, you know, fire breathe you. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to fully understand this. He's He's got two dusters stuffed up his nose. Um, I think he's smoke, it's smoke coming out. His dragon nose. Oh, because he grabbed a hot potato and he's exclamating very largely that yeah, it's just, hot. Either it surprised him or that's how he's cooking them. I'm not sure which. Yeah, because there's a fire already going on. I think I think he he tried to pick it up and he fucking dropped the hot potato as a hot potato one. As one does with a hot potato. That's pretty standard. So, However, my concern is, if you're a dragon and you have fire coming out of your nose, how are your little dragon hands not heat resistant? That's impractical. Yeah. <laughs> Anything that comes out of your body, your body should be able to fully you should retain be able to that. hold it in your little pauses. Your yeah. Little posy poos, I think. I mean, there's a lot of things in my uh, that come out of my body that I don't want to hold in my hands, but I can. But yeah, you can. It's not, like, not going to hurt yeah. you. It might gross right. you out, and right. But it's not painful. Do you think that you think that dragons think hot things are gross because they come out of their body? I they kind of consider it to be like a fluid of their own, and they're like, "Yuck! You're cooking with that." That could be. That's why they eat people whole. That's why poop bones. Remember we yeah, talked about poop that. bones. When you eat when you eat a full human just right out of the, the sky, you're gonna poop 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 bones. Poop bones are the best. I'm just gonna put that in the chat for just so we know bones. that that is I'm important. Like poop bones. Yes. Keep it going, guys. Gals and non binary <laughs> pals. Um you know, it's becoming my catch all like when I hear myself say guys, when I know that I don't mean male people, I just like autopilot into guys, gals, and non binary pals. That's the way to do it. Because if I, mean, I can't avoid you're... saying it, <laughs> that's what I've got to do. Whenever you're learning something, I gotta have backups and, and plans. You have to have like. You know, you're retraining your brain. So what's going to happen? You're not just going to go from like never doing it to always doing it. You need a transition. Sure. And sure. so being able to either like stop yourself and go, nope, nope. And recorrecting yourself or yeah, doing that. Like that's the, that's the, that's the next step is that you catch yourself quick enough to be able to add new things to it and then you get to a point where you're yeah, not like, using it, it at all sound like it was That's... intentional i guess i can see myself in a point whenever i find human beings again and interact with them in the human world that i'll be like what's up guys gals non-binary pals and they'll think it was oh. intentional and then i'm gonna oh. go no i need to stop saying that 
<laughs> right? Or you're just going to start saying peeps. That's, you know, or, that's, um, don't you get, what's up, everybody? I've got dolls. alternates. I just have to remember to put them into play earlier People in use. my conversations. Um, All right. Back to the belly creatures. jeans. Back to the belly jeans. All right. Belly jeans. I could call everybody belly jeans or poop bugs. Hello, belly jeans. What's oh up, poop God. bugs? Hashtag, hashtag my little belly jeans. I think that maybe all of our viewers might just have to become poop bugs. We'll have to see what they feel about that. Let us know. Hey, hey all you poop bones out there. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Although I do, I love my little belly jeans. <laughs> my little belly jeans. My little belly jeans. Yeah, because I could be like, hey, all you, how, uh, hey, all you, my little belly jeans. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> As all the fatties among us are like, get the fuck away from me. Let me tell you, I have never met a little piece of skin that I didn't enjoy a little nom nom on. It's true. People is... get really self-conscious and they're like, oh, I have this like little little nom nom piece. And I'm like, no, that's a nom nom piece. So you need to <laughs> enjoy it. If you can nom nom it off a little tiny baby, you can nom nom it off yourself. It's so, true. like true. Enjoy it. Don't it's a think sweet little piece of flesh. Everyone else needs to enjoy it. I think they can just find their. Own I mean, the, the masses don't need to enjoy it. Everyone, you know, uh, I'm not a touchy person. <laughs> <laughs> For someone who's like, I'm gonna nom nom all of you. I'm nom nom all of you, belly jeans. You're all talk. You're there. all talk. I'm all talk. Don't touch me. Don't <laughs> fucking touch. Me. In my, if you're in my circle, and we have had enough contact, aces. No, I will never do that in the public. No, I will never do that to like, <laughs> like, like, um, sort of friends. <laughs> this is how you yeah. know how close you are to Hunter. If she's actually yeah. nom nom to you, and she wasn't really shit face drunk, things are real. <laughs> she probably loves you. A child raised her hand. I know, said the girl. Belly jeans sound like Kelly beans sound like jelly beans to me. Of course, said the headmaster. He told the poop to bring some. The hungry thing and the small thing ate them all up. Like, duh, teachers, it's jelly bean. Belly bean. The cook has... That many jelly beans just on hand? He makes them? He must have manufactured his own. Snippity slit. I don't know. Skip, snickety split. I don't even know what I'm trying to say right now. Lickety Quick split. lickety slit. Yes. Cash. You see? Snippity snip is great. <laughs> Snippity snap is great. I don't care. <laughs> Belly jeans, you know? Um, Maybe it's I, Easter I, time I, and the stores are well stocked. I don't know. I'm impressed, though. I, maybe it's maybe it's Chef's secret stash. I would love, I would love to taste somebody's gourmet belly jeans. Isn't that what jelly bellies are? Uh, but I mean, like right out of the oven, or like how are the fuck they make these? Like I, I don't know. I want to taste like I want to taste them fresh. I want to go to the <sighs> jelly belly place and I want to taste them. I'm going to be doing some Googling later on artisan jelly beans. I'll see what I can come up with for you. How to make them. I don't know if we can make them or if we can order them. Or I feel like you don't want them fresh out of the oven because they will definitely burn your They're mouth real... up. They're yeah. going to be real hot in there. I don't even know if they really do get hot. That they may go to a certain temperature enough to melt the gelatin and then they get re -fro I think I've actually seen how Jelly Bellies are made, and I don't think that's how it is. Is that There's an episode a... of how it's made? Because I like yes. that stupid show. Yes, I, it a absolutely lot. is. And it's a giant cement mixer of sorts. So, I mean, <laughs> you want some ASMR? I would literally, if they just had streaming of, of Jelly Bellies being made, I would fucking watch that all the time. There I, are I'm an army of factory workers that are just like, fuck you right now. They're just like, fuck you. You don't know. I, I know I, it's probably not enjoyable to do it <laughs> no it's enjoyable to watch it being done sure I, I have a <laughs> like so many things and I think that there's a very true personality uh gauge that if you watch somebody 
eat jelly bellies one at a time or just as a handful ew i don't know if i i, ew. I know i i know but i've seen people do it and i'm like i don't know if i can fuck with that that's they're such distinctly different flavors yes some of them are yes. meant like i don't know if they still do it but i remember back in the day you get your jelly belly pack at the movies and there'd be recipes on the back to mix them together. Yeah, so yeah. you like eat these ones together to get this flavor. But you can't just do it random. You're going to end up with like a pineapple buttered popcorn bullshit That's happening. That's chaotic evil. That's what that is. Ugh. Ugh. Chaotic evil. No. Do no. not. No, no, That no. person, someone to avoid. All right. <clears throat> all right. So we've discovered they're jelly beans and they were delicious. And the hungry they things ate delicious. them all. Fucking hamburgers, fucking jelly beans. The hungry thing rubbed his stomach. Still he hungry. pointed to a sign that said, Feed me. The small thing pointed to her sign that said, Me too. The teachers began to worry. I don't believe they'll ever leave. It's just not right. Such appetite. I fear the worst. What if they burst? Remember our manners, said the headmaster. What would you like to eat? He asked the visitor. Blow nuts, said the hungry thing. Blow nuts, cried the cook. Dear me, let me see. How do you eat them? What can they be? Now, I feel like we're approaching, like, I can't X-rated. remember the principle that says, like, the most logical answer is probably the right one. And these guys don't get that at all. They're just going to go off onto their crazy-ass theories as opposed to saying what the most logical thing is a blow nut i'm pretty sure this the hungry thing wants sexual favors now blow my nuts yes that's what he <laughs> wants although the little one's a girl so i don't know how how that I mean, works she wants food. <laughs> she wants food he's like blow my nuts and she's like me too and they're just like we don't uh, uh, we, we, uh. we don't know what to do all right not in front of the children not That's why there are no children in this scene. Mm-hmm. I've heard, said a teacher, blow nuts taste great. They are round, furry fishes that roll on your plate. That's right, said the headmaster. Blow nuts can float. With a wink and a smile, they'll jump into your boat. Okay, there is so much wrong right now with this picture. <laughs> oh my god. Like, it just, like, skeeves me out. The idea of, like, this flapping and writhing thing that feels like a fucking shag carpet. And, I don't know. But and there's a giant what? fish in this boat eating this other fish. No, no, that's that's the... That's another hungry thing, actually. It's like a fish. No, I think he's just leaning back. He's got all the textures on the side of his face. I don't fucking know. I don't know. It's like a, I see fish eating fish. I don't know. But then there's this. I don't even know what is it. It's sort of like an elephant alligator. And yeah. a lion. That's a strung out lion. Everyone really enjoys opium in this. Book. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you this- ever had a cronut before? It's so good. Ugh. Don't even, don't even get me started on the cronut. Oh my god. I would <laughs> well, love what, a cronut. That's actually what the hungry thing has been asking for is a cronut. And I, now you understand. <sighs> I don't want my kid saying blown up. I'm going to say, if I'm reading this book, I'm going to call it a cronut. Because <laughs> you just do, because blown up's going to be too much of a trigger. <laughs> too much. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Many hands went up. A boy with glasses said, It's easy. Blow nuts sounds like show nuts sounds like donuts to me. The cook gave them some. The hungry thing and the little thing ate them all up. The small thing began to squirm. She couldn't sit still. She whispered into his father's ear. Mat boom, the hungry thing told the headmaster. Mat boom? cried the cook. How do you eat it? What could it be? The headmaster didn't know. The teachers didn't know. One girl went up to the hungry thing. She said, 
Mad boom sound like just one thing to me. Does your little girl need the bathroom? The hungry thing nodded. He lowered his head and the small thing slid off. The girl took her to the bathroom. Aww, I love like the, the size. Now you can see that the little thing is as big as the child. And the dog. They're all like similar I, sizes. I think that little thing actually just wanted to take a shit in the bathroom. Well, yeah, that's what he wanted. A math boom. <laughs> math boom. I need to take a math boom. Yeah, absolutely. Let me just take you to this classroom and you do your thing. I appreciate that these kids have come up with a weird way to serve the donuts. Or they're trying to get them for themselves. Because it's really hard know. to serve the donuts when they're on the stick here. Like, it's I being think presented. they're trying to put them on the stick to hand them to the guys the up baby. there because nobody can reach him. Okay. Maybe that's what it is. At least Great there aren't birds. But they it, look, yeah. yeah. This... Oh my god. You could not. If there were birds, no. The cook... Although, is... maybe that's how the hungry thing eats, too. Birds? Eats birds, too. Yep. Well, I'm sure the next, next thing I'll ask for is for squab, and it'll all make sense. Squab. Let's see, sweet little kid. I'm actually starting to understand, since the, the, the writer is a linguistics expert, I'm starting to understand that they're saying, this word sounds like this word sounds like that word. Like, you um, can figure shit out with context, children. Don't just yes. pull stuff out of your ass like these stupid teachers. They're just like, oh, yes, I read a book. I know exactly what that Ooh. is. And they're like, Ooh. no, it's, it's actually not that not that uh, complicated. No, it's not, it's not carpet fish. Fucking no. weirdos. <laughs> Lay off the opium. When they return, the small thing would not climb onto her father's back. She went down the slide instead. The hungry thing stopped her. He placed her on his back once again. He pointed to his sign that said, Feed me. But the small thing hid her face. The poor little thing's like, No more food, you fucker! I can't, I'm not a bottomless pit. I tried to make I'm room, and I can't. Want to play, Dad? You don't have to be a dick about it. And he's like, you know that these 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 are fuckers. These humans are fuckers. Yep. You don't want to get too close to them. Our it's names like, are hungry things. We be hungry yeah. or die. Right, but Dad, get I fucking board. hate. What's that? Like, there's a field mouse. I think it's a field mouse. Where? So pretty much as soon as it's born, it just mates like crazy until it dies. That's like most rodents. Yeah. That's all they, that's what they do. I, I feel like this hungry thing is like, we literally just eat until we die. Yeah. And she's like, maybe we want to be on a slide for a second. <laughs> for a hot fucking second. Yeah. And he's like, nope. Time to eat. And you're like, dad, I'm not like you. This is clearly a lesson <laughs> about acceptance, not just understanding the English language. Getting my counselor on. What would you like to eat? asked the headmaster. Crackeroni and sneeze. The hungry thing answered. Crackeroni and sneeze, said the cook. Let me see. How do you eat it? What can it be? A teacher said crackeroni and sneeze is a slippery dough. When you catch it and you eat it, it makes your nose grow. It tastes like rose added the headmaster i prefer it on toast especially good when you're dining with a ghost where did they come but, up with these things i told you well maybe there's a little lsd in with that opium like, what are the, the dough this appears like, to be alive this looks like a bad trip it is it says when you catch it and eat it it makes your nose grow so it moves Ugh. Yeah, this is absolutely an acid trip because you cannot be wearing that kind of fucking floral and not be on some kind of drug. And the ghost is coming out that of a shirt. bottle like a genie. He looks like a pervert. That ghost <laughs> is like a pervert face. Opium pervert ghost is what he is. 
like that. <laughs> yes. Nose growings and like, I mean, the elephant one is probably looking forward to that. What's an anteater? It's yeah. totally an anteater. And it's... that's its like pet anteater. It's unclear. It's unclear what any of these creatures are. These are just pulled out of the imagination of this teacher and this headmaster that are just in their own fucking world. Everything just wants crack, and like nobody's listening to him. Crack and coke. Crack and sneeze. Yeah, there. Yeah. Crack and sneeze. I got gotcha. you. Yep, makes good sense. Street terms. All hands raise. A boy with freckles said, "Crackaroni and sneeze sounds like snackaroni and bees." Sounds like macaroni and cheese to me. Why, of course, said the headmaster. The cook brought some. The hungry thing ate it all. He wiped his mouth on the headmaster's sleeve. He was ready to leave. But where was the small thing? She was playing on the slide again. This time, when the hungry thing lifted her off, she began to cry. She would not stop. The hungry thing tried to comfort her. Oh no, they were about to go. I do confess we're in a mess, said the headmaster. The children tried to help. What does she like best? They asked the hungry thing. Is it not clear that she just wants to play on the slide for a little bit? Just wants to fucking play. Like, all he wants to do is gorge his ass on food. And I kind of get it because he's bigger than... Her, he's so got she's more full. Room. She's full. He's got more to eat. Yeah, and that that makes sense. But yeah, she wants to hang out. She wants to socialize. Maybe it's not so fucking great having to sit on your back all day and watch you eat, mm, Dad. Mm. Mm -hmm. He's sharing with the birds there, which that's nice. Little birdies. Those are nice birds. Those aren't fronty fucking birds who try to steal hamburgers. That's true. They didn't take the whole hamburger. They're sharing the macaroni politely. Yes, I appreciate that. Harsh fellow, he replied. They brought her marshmallow. She didn't stop crying. Mice dream, said the hungry thing. They brought her ice cream. She didn't stop crying. Google bum, said the hungry thing. They offer her bubble gum. Nothing made her stop crying. The hungry thing put his head on his claws. He didn't know what to do. The school children whispered to one another. Then one child whispered to the headmaster. He said, what a splendid idea, and set everyone to work. Carefully, they lifted the slide and hung it around the neck of the hungry thing. The small thing hugged it. For you to take home, they told her. They figured it out. She doesn't just want to eat your fucking food. She wants to play on the slide. I think she also wants some social time, but I understand the compromise. That's kind of nice. Yeah. And and I understand how the dad is only like, this is all I know how to do. Yeah. This is all I know how to do. Eat. And, and these and poor everyone... little headmasters are like, get these fuckers out of here before we can no longer afford to feed the children. We got fucking go back to class how long has it taken like to prepare all those meals this is a very it's a very disruptive visitor really right I mean, there's no other way it's been no way all class it. it's been all school long their funds for um feeding these children have run out for the week or the month, or the month. that was a fucking lot of macaroni and cheese it was don't you dare by the way the hungry thing smiled. He turned his sign around. In big letters, it said, Thank you! The small thing was worn out. She was fast asleep. With her head on the slide, the hungry thing turned her sign around. It said, Me too! Aww. <laughs> There's a grateful little monster. That's so sweet. That's so sweet. Um, I love it. I do still have difficulty with how fucking stupid those teachers are. Like, why are I they mean, so dumb? Well, and I guess from a linguistics point of view, like, there's probably a lot of educators and people who are stupid to the fact that there are kids who have linguistic struggles. 
and they won't tolerate anything but linguistic perfection and that you need to be able to listen to them and see exactly what they what they need um and if you keep feeding them dialogue and talking to them then right. everything Bouncy will be pop. better um i don't know it's it's funny there's there seems to be a lot of like hidden subtext of like maybe linguistic teachers a little salty about <laughs> other teachers yeah like just take two seconds you dumbasses and listen to and you know try to use your mind a little like maybe what it sounds like is what it is not just like whatever you imagine it to be but know. again in this world they're all fed up on opium they're, fed down <laughs> on opium. they're all like they spent all their money on clothes they i mean they've got lavish foods which are pretty great that like a fucking cook that chef hat was well earned she makes <laughs> making donuts making macaroni and cheese all jelly beans, jelly beans? Blam, blam, blam. No problem. That was not... The issue was not, I can't make that. The issue was, I don't understand what you want. Mm -hmm. And if you just tell me, then I will get you anything you need. So and Those cute um, little children figured it out. That's cute as shit. I, I love that. I will definitely read that a hundred million times. Yeah, I'm saying it's a good one. If nothing else, because the little monsters and creatures are so cute. And, you know, you can talk about rhyming with that book until the day ends. There's so many rhymes and things. And Yeah, I love it. All right. So let's see what we've got next up in our bag of tricks. Number two, come back, Zach. By Trish Holland, illustrated by Sachiko Yoshikawa. Um, this YouTuber is Daddy Reads to Three, which, spoiler, is Daddy reading a book to his three children. Oh no way! Yeah. Oh. That's what's that's what we're gonna see, and this is clearly it's adorable because it's um you know it's filmed on a on a cell phone and it's pretty cute. The kids are sort of appearing, so let's uh, let's jump in. Let's jump into this. Right, bouncy balls. Away, Zach crawls. Mama says, come, come back, back, Zach. The kids are helping. It's adorable. This is clearly a book for a little slightly lower, lower readers. Right. Younger kid level. Yeah. Um, little. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm just going to be a creep right here. I'm just going <laughs> to... I can see that he has a, an affinity for uh, jeans that are ripped. Yeah, yeah, he does. In that knee, that's a style choice. I like it. I like it. He's got a little bit in the pocket, a lot of it in the knee. Three kids, you don't got time. You don't got time for darning of of the jeans. You know though that he bought those jeans that way on purpose. That is how they were manufactured. I'm pr yeah. He's oh. he's got an Apple Watch. He's not like. <laughs> Im impoverished past any points. He's this is his. This is not a. I can't afford to fix my clothes because these children are running me ragged. <laughs> this is just a. I am cool. <laughs> cool dad with three kids. With a YouTube channel dedicated to reading, I like it. Right. Oh, I forgot to turn so that the people could see the book. I'm sorry, everybody. Here we go. There's the book. We were just listening. We weren't watching. Oh, yes. It's okay. Let me... Yeah. <laughs> like, what? What are you talking about? Oh, there we go. There it is. Yeah. This is what we're talking about. What? So, as you can see, so this is the little girl. This is her mother. This is her a son. And then here's Zach. Zach's got siblings. Boxes with bows. Cruising, Zach goes. Daddy says, Come back, Zach. I feel like this is something people can relate to. Don't you have a monster child that is constantly running away and getting into shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isn't this yes, your life? Back. Like, come back, child! Come back, <laughs> child! Absolutely my life. Is that I, like, if you want to take a second, nothing... I mean, he's got, what? A scissors and ribbon and gift wrap? No. 
No. Yeah, he's, no. he's all over it. No, it's up, it's done upstairs after this child has gone to sleep. You do not have any kind of thing of importance that you need to focus on. Anything Nothing of value it. must be hidden on a high shelf. <laughs> yeah, the, the living room kitchen belongs to this child. And if you attempt anything like anything other than making food, which is hopefully done at a higher counter, which is hopefully done during the time the other parent is distracting. <laughs> they work. Yeah, this is this is ridiculous. And like, yeah, he put the shame on you, daddy, to put the gifts on the ground. Yeah, Within and you know, old reach. and we've established that this kid's got two older siblings, so this is not like a first child and run, like not knowing any better. This is just right. negligence. Yep. Also, uh, I will. I know it's like funny because we don't normally care about who reads the things out loud. This kid's got uh, a heart drawn on uh, her hand. I yeah. Always do that. That like, especially when um, when my first kid, um, my daughter was little, and I was doing my makeup. Um, she always wanted to always come up and like want to touch things and go through stuff. So my agreement was that I would do her makeup if I could do my makeup, and that constituted of taking my eyeliner and just drawing a heart Aww. and then filling it in with eyeshadow, and then she How got cute. to like. And then I would give her a big brush and she would just like brush all over her body. But yeah, I see that heart and I'm like, oh, wow. Uh. You know, kids are into that sort of thing. Um, you know, something as simple as a marker or a sticker or those temporary tattoos, they go bonkers. I, I you know. It's really a simple little thing. When um, Kat Von D came out with this amazing, um, Kat Von D came out with this amazing uh, lip liner and it was like a bright orange and I was so stoked to get it. I, I got a little sample and I, silly me, I don't know why. I was clearly e exhibiting this kind of daddy-like bullshit. Um, my little Sephora bag was in the back. I don't know why I did that. But um, I came out of the car to go get her and she was a fucking tiger. She had run lines all up and down her body with the little sample of that long everlasting lip liquid lip liner so um kids love to make lines on their that's their what bodies. they do that's what they do that's okay it. all right so my camera's not working right for you correct can you see things the way you're supposed to see things I mean, I can't see OBS. Okay, let's see if we can fix that for you. What is it doing? Oh, sorry, everybody. It's fine if you if it's. I mean, because I, <laughs> I, I have. Felt oh, there the we same. go. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. So Minor the thing. only thing is that um, on Discord, I need to be. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Sorry. We caught up. We caught up. We know what we're doing. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're professionals. We're, we're professionals. So professional. It took you two seconds. That's right. And that is a complete difference than us having to shut everything down <laughs> for 30 minutes, clicking and screaming and being like, why is this not working? So oh, we've got this. We are rolling. Progress. Going yeah. with the flow and rolling with the roll, and I don't know why it turned itself off, but hopefully it doesn't do it again. But you know, just let me know. Just inactive, it'll be fine. All right, next up, <laughs> Candy's here. Mm -hmm. Surprises. Uh -oh. They do not want him to see. Ooh, dandy duck waddles. Quack quack. Behind Zach toddles. Sister says. Why is the, why is it a dandy duck? What are they saying? Just trying to, just trying to be cool. <laughs> it's it's a cute little duck though. Why can't it be dandy duck? <laughs> why can't it be any dandy duck? Ooh, dandy duck. He's um, got little ducklings. That kid is going right into the pond. 
There's a funny thing where if you as a parent read a book like this, because he's putting in extra stuff. So he said the first line and then said quack, quack. Mm -hmm. And is pointing out like little tiny things. The kids are too. But it's because whatever you read it, if you give it that much detail, the kids will hold you to it. You better continue to give that same kind of detail. Otherwise, there's complaints. You know what I bet? This is why this man is making these videos. He's never reading this book again. You want to read that book? Play. Put it on your iPad. There you go. Story time. Leave me the fuck alone. That's that's genius. Yes. He only reads every book once. That is his secret. Um, We tell you to hide the book and pick again. He's just like, fine, watch the video. Leave me the fuck alone. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> refresh ice cream in a cup Claire eats it up nice <laughs> Zach climbs up brother says come back Zach yeah <laughs> yeah so he definitely adds stuff in clearly one of these kids his name is Claire yeah yeah, trying to get the uh, the kids to be interactive and and prompt. And you could hear. I hear you, Mama. I hear you. You're clearly the one off the top with the the camera. She 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 had to do the the Mama laugh. Ha <laughs> 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 Just fucking like encourage Daddy because he... <laughs> he's got a tough crowd. These kids are really quiet, and I'm really surprised. There was a kid with a head like at the at his. Uh, at the top and I was like that kid's gonna come over and slap the book that's like quintessential yeah because that kid's not looking at the book the little one is not engaged but you know clearly this is this is again this is your life this kid is on the table into the snacks he's everywhere Uh uh-huh he's never gonna do what you say people perky parrot talks over Zach walks. I bet I know what's coming next. Grandma says, Come back, Zach. <laughs> Clearly, they're at the zoo in this one, in this rendition. And he's off to Parentland. And she's like, No, we're in the petting zoo, you little shit. Stay over here. Well, what are you doing? Not holding on to the fucking kid like a device grip. Yeah, they just let this kid get it. I mean, I don't know. This reminds me of, you know, in dog training, if you're standing there saying, come, Fluffy, come, Fluffy, come, come, come. Um, That never works because the more times you say the word, the less the word means. Um, Right. And so then eventually your dog is conditioned not to come until it's heard the word come ten times. I bet it's the same for children. Um, I bet Jack doesn't come back until he's heard you say come back six to seven times. Like as a rule. Jack needs to be picked up and brought back. Yes. And and (laughs) every time every time that happens. But there is a certain level of parent fatigue that you (laughs) can't do everything all the time. (laughs) You need to save your energy. And so if you can just stand there and beg a child to do something, (laughs) even if it's 10 or 15 times, that's 10 or 15 times that you can just stand there for a second. (laughs) Um, Because we all like, we all fucking know what you need to do. You need to go and pick up that kid. And that's, just, yeah, you're right. It is the same thing with dogs. Like, you need yeah. to go get your dog. Yeah, you need to make a, a, a consequence and a reward when they do the right thing. And if you don't, you're just setting yourself up for hair pulling. Yeah. And, I, and also, again, like, this kid is not running free while I, I it, hand in a vice grip <laughs> in a stroller attached to me on a backpack they've got those leashes right you know you know here's the thing (laughs) when i first had my kid i was like i will never fucking do that and why should i because i had a really magnificent child who was teeny tiny and so i could just hold her in my hand and (laughs) we walked around (laughs) like like the hungry little thing she was just right on my back no problem this 
child is is the large version of the hungry little thing and i am the little version so i <laughs> i have it has been brought up but the the reality is that it is like having a great dane on a leash and i'm pretty goddamn sure that he'll just either break it or <laughs> somehow yank me onto the ground that's what i think that the two choices are so instead because here's okay so here's the thing about leashes they're idle and then when they want to go do something and they get yanked on that doesn't really teach the kids Oh, no. I think it's just supposed to be, like, a safety measure. Like, it reminds me of, you know, since we're at the zoo here, when that kid, like, monkeyed over a fence and jumped into the gorillas. Like, if there had been a backup leash, he would not have made it all the way to the gorillas. There would have been, like, a six-foot limit of how far he could get in case you miss, in case all the other measures fail. Like, it shouldn't be the go-to. My judgy judgeness on leashes has gone yeah. <laughs> I was like 100% fucking never. Now I'm like you know, 20% maybe, like maybe maybe there's a time and a place for that. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And especially when it's like grandparents and shit and you're just like I I would never put my son on in in the I would never put my son in the care of one of the grandparents because it's just, it's too much. That's way too much of a, it's a Clydesdale just like trampling over you. I don't, yeah. don't want you to break anything. I mean, if they're at all feeble, there's just no hope. Right. Great grandparents don't even try. Oh my don't God, no. <laughs> Thankfully all mine are dead. But... Supervised visits only. <laughs> <sighs> My niece and nephew do still have a great grandmother, and um, yeah, no, that great grandmother is not in charge of the children. I guess I have a great grandfather somewhere around. <laughs> you Whatever. Know, she, she, you know, great grandmother lives in a nursing home. Other people take care of her. She's not taking care of children. She's right. certainly not taking them to the zoo unsupervised. Right. But it's like the rest of the family's back there. It's not grandma on her own. It's just everybody's in on yelling at this kid. Paying attention. Amazing magic trick. Zach runs quick. Grandpa says. Come on, These kids are all getting into it now. Yeah, they're the, the comeback Zach chorus. I feel like that alone is enough for me. To say that this is not a book that I would want to be reading. <laughs> I don't think I want to deal with the comeback Zach chorus. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's you know, it's a personal preference. Because you have some parents who are super into like full kids interaction and that they thrive off that. Maybe when you have no sleep and you're fucking hungry and you just want to get these kids to bed, maybe you're not too into the like full like, no. chorus, but that no. might be. There's no, there's no repeat. There's no participation right now. I mean, there are times. Obviously, you you can't talk. You're already, you can't... You're already a surly parent, and you <laughs> you can't teach a child to read without actually, you know, like doing Reading. terrible labor of painfully sitting there and letting them learn to read and you yeah. know helping them without doing it for them and this is yeah. why i don't have those because fuck that that's terrible um <laughs> it's just it's a slow burn though that's, oh. the, that's the whole reality of children is yes. that like this is this is what like three two three years into having it so you there's progression out. you know oh. you've watched it like with wiggle around like a worm and then you put effort into training and then it's starting suddenly starting to like talk. I mean, sometimes that's like the most thrilling thing in the world. It's like, but... well, like thank goodness it's actually a human in there. Yeah. Like not well, just a little parasitic shit monster. There is a very interesting, cause you're like, this is very cute and adorable little wiggly thing. And I'm not like, I'm terrified. I'm not really sure. I don't want to break it. And then you move into the like, 
oh, like the lights turned on and like, oh, it repeated something I said or it did something I did. And they're like, oh, OK. And then and then it gets into like having its own opinions and you're like, oh. How about that? <laughs> Isn't that cute? <laughs> Just wait until you get to. I hate you, Bob. That hasn't no, happened yet, I has mean, it? there's no, but the there's there's a in between of like, I will not leave this house without my purple galoshes. Where are my purple galoshes? And you're like, honey, I've got three other pairs of galoshes. Let's just put those on. And then there is a meltdown, and you're like, okay, so. I can either wrestle you to the ground and shove these galoshes on and take you kicking and screaming into the car and throw you in the car and have all the neighbors check out this screaming kid. And when they come up and ask you, like, what the hell's wrong with your kid? Why are you beating your kid? And I'm like, well, I didn't find the fucking purple galoshes. So that's what's happening right now, okay? Um, or I could go find the purple galoshes. Or if you're in a place of privilege... You fucking buy three pairs of purple galoshes, and then you never have to worry about it. No other colors of galoshes. I feel like if you've got galoshes, and that's all you need, and they won't, like, I don't know. I guess it depends on what kind of a hurry you're in, because I feel like, okay, you either wear these galoshes, or you don't wear shoes. Take some time to think about it. You're that's a question of whether or not. That's a question of whether or not you're willing to accept the the, the repercussions. Oh yeah, because you, you know. there's still going to be that screamy thing, and you, you, you know, I'm willing. Right. That's a battle I'd be willing to have on occasion, but I guess you know, easier said than done. And that that's also the things like isolated incident versus how many times today have we talked about purple gloshes? <sighs> no, I definitely. Good. I've had a shoe incident. I took my niece to the park playing at the park and she takes her shoes off and I told her you can't play without your shoes on because I don't fucking know if she's gonna step on something and hurt her foot yeah. it's like wood chips and I'm so I'm like you know I don't know the rules I'm just the aunt but I said no you have to put your shoes on and she wouldn't do it and I said okay you could you put your shoes on right now or we're going home and she wouldn't do it and I was like, all right, let's go home. And she wouldn't do it. I had to climb up, remove child from play structure, carry her and her shoes to the house, you know, back from the park. Um, and she just thought it was hilarious. It did not accomplish anything. She was laughing the whole way. She thought it was so funny that I went and got her and brought her back. It's a game. And her mom it's was like, you know, she's like, I just would have let her play without shoes on. And I was like, fuck, I can't win. <laughs> but I followed through on my threat. Wasn't and that's, empty. that's the most important thing. <laughs> there needs to be a re- uh, like follow through on, on the shit you're saying you're gonna oh. do. But yeah, absolutely. That's that that is life. That is life. <sighs> there know. are some parents who are just like, I'm willing to accept the consequences and I don't care. And there are some parents who are like, I'm trying to look out for you and you're being a shit bag. Not only like either you're gonna <laughs> completely lose your shit or you're gonna laugh at me the whole time while I'm losing my shit. And neither is neither is awesome. Oh, it's a thing. Fucking children. But she did well. Look at you. Oh, yeah. Well, she's still alive. Her feet aren't, like, cut up or anything. Right. She's not missing feet. <laughs> All the toes are showing. not like, I went to the park with my auntie and <laughs> I don't have feet anymore. I didn't listen. And now I don't have toes. <laughs> I don't have toes. <laughs> let's, let's do a children's book called I Don't Have Toes. Oh, my Damn, gosh. I'm going to write that down. I have to tell you, um, somewhat related my worst childhood nightmare it was a recurring childhood nightmare that i had that i was in a cave with my sister and that for some reason i was sitting up on a rock and i don't remember like the dialogue i just remember that the result was that my sister came up and bit off my big toe and i was just sitting in this screen in this cave screaming because she had bitten off my toe and then I wake up in bed, and I pull off the sheets, and my toe is gone. <laughs> that is my recurring childhood nightmare that I couldn't tell you how many times I had it. Um, but, you know, enough that it was recurring and that it's never left my brain. And how do you not hold it against your sister? I mean, I'm sure I did when I was tiny when I started having it, which was, I don't know, four-ish? Right. Or probably the first time I had that dream. That's wrong. That was not the last time that I had that dream. I had it many times. And I wonder if he, I wonder if she nibbled on your toe beans when you were little, and maybe you just like 
put that together, you know, how like I want to eat that foot. I don't know. Yeah. I just talked about little belly jeans and No, it was definitely not it was a cute like she was mad at me and she wanted me to do something I didn't want to do and she was just like like... Little kids' brains, you know? You think it's really cute and adorable and little kids are interpreting it as you're gonna literally chew off a goddamn toe. I mean, I also remember, like, you know, that, got your nose, got your nose. Yeah, I definitely remember then my dad going, oh, oh, ate your nose and crying for an hour. So <laughs> it could happen when you're tidy. The 80s and 90s were like a shag <laughs> of, like, being dickweeds to kids. And, oh, yeah. And it's like, because it was, there was humor in it because in the... You know, in the 70s, like the 50s, 60s, 70s, it was all abusive. Like, they legitimately fucking hated you. And, like, 80s and 90s had, like, let's try to be nice to kids, Spock, Dr. Spock and stuff. And so, like, ha, 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 I'm going to be funny about potentially hating you. And now it's like, I don't hate you, but I don't know what to do, and I'm very stressed out. (laughs) Oh, I yeah, I definitely cried for a really long time when the nose eating happened, and I'm pretty sure that someone had to like pretend to vomit and put it back because, because I was like, no, my nose is still there, I feel it, and my sister's like, no, it just feels like it, I can see it, it's not there. Fucking, fucking gaslighting! Sisters. Your sister was gaslighting. Okay, now she. Oh yeah, she deserves she that was. monster. Of course she, she was. Monster sister was six years older than me. Of course she was a total bitch. We hated each other. She was so mean. She's the worst. Terrible. Again, it's just an era, you know. Hopefully, we'll see. Clowns in a car, Zach pedals far. Auntie, Auntie says, says, "Come back, Zach." Oh yeah, I can see he wrote in the book like the names of people that he wants that he wants to say in there, because that says like. Auntie Tracy says, come back, Zach. Okay. You know, I thought I would understand if Zach needed to get the fuck out of there because there were clowns, but I see that he's actually riding along with Yes, them. he's chasing the clowns. He's not running away from the clowns. Yeah. He's just so. being a jerk. You know what's the scariest thing ever? Actually, I went to, um, before it closed down... In my local area. I went to a chuckle Chuck E. Cheese. Jeez. Never been before. It had, again, in the 80s, 90s, like, everyone talked about Chuck E. Cheese and how fucking great it was. Yeah, I've never been I go one. there. Cost too many tokens to get anything, first oh, yeah. of all. But the one thing that, like, burned into my brain was the guy who was walking around in the Chuck E. Cheese outfit. How there were millions of children just climbing like between <laughs> his legs around his legs i remember like seeing a kid like grab his nose and shake it and just be like ah and i was like this is a living hell this is not but you know it's like a high school kid in there <laughs> it's a high school kid trying so hard to walk around and be nice to these children and they are an infestation <laughs> on top of him uh, it's a lot you know, a lot. I think the kids at Disneyland and Disney World are a little bit more in control. Not always, I but I bet you not. I bet but you. But there's not. just a level of like a class difference between Disneyland mascots and Six Flags mascots and, and Chuck E. Cheese. No <laughs> He's down at the bottom. You. Yeah, no one gives a shit about you, Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. For sure. I've never been to a Chuck E. Cheese. I'm still jealous. I hear I'm not missing out on anything. But someday, I will go. Someday. It'll smell like cigarettes and sadness. It won't smell like cigarettes anymore. You can't smoke in Chuck E. Cheese. It never goes away. (laughs) That is is the haunting of the 1990s. It's Uh, happening. We'll see. I will go. I will stream it when it happens. Yes. (laughs) I'll at least Facebook live it. Come on. Who's whack and smack a long gallop sack? This child's whole life is just chasing after shit. Look, he gets older and he keeps doing it. This does not bode well for you in your future. 
my kid is so pu- like pumped. He's he he's on the trampoline every day. I've got a little mini trampoline and he's doing at least 15 to 20 minutes of cardio every day yeah. on the trampoline. Wait, you show him to a horse, to he's going to be off after it. Things. He's going to eat that horse. You know, it's too bad <laughs> that Greyhound racing is no longer a thing because that's really what you need to do is get him into one of them races. I would absolutely race my baby. <laughs> I would absolutely do that. <laughs> baby races. That's a thing to look up. Are there baby races? Because, right. yes. Yes. Wait, look. Rhymes, they all rhyme with Zach. Uncle says. Zach just does not give a shit about what's going on with his family. Baby racist. He just does not give a fuck. This is an independent spirit right here. Right? Yeah. That explains it. Four friendly faces. Fast Zach races. Family says goodbye, Zach. You see, they're ready. They're just like my mama on the first day of school. Get, like, the, get fuck the fuck out. out of here. We're having a party. Get away from me. Bye bye, Zachy. Bye bye. Oh, God, he's Zachy. got a song. Bye bye, Zachy. We hate to see you go. Bum, 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 bum. Wow. Zach says, I'll come back. <laughs> oh, they're like, he's like, don't worry. I'm going to come back to make your life hell again. Soon enough. Just wait. Mom that and dad's dad. a champ. He really I couldn't has. even concentrate on the story because that dad's a champ. He's I know. really. That was He's not the account. ideal pick again video because there was a lot of distractions in what was going on with the reader and his life. And, you know, every now and again, I think that's okay. I can't help it. Whenever I see things in the background, like I want to creep out and be like, "What's what kind of shampoos you got in that? <laughs> when people take pictures of themselves in the bathroom. I think that's the most fucked up thing, by the way. Like that's just like minus 10. If I, if I have ever like, is this person attractive? If you have a bathroom pick... Where you're, like, taking Done. a picture of the mirror with your phone instead of just, it's, like, yeah. selfie camming yeah. it. Yeah, that's your picture. That's silly. It's like you didn't take the moment to... Man, come on. There's so many things you can do. Yeah. You're so... There's so many things. Um, I know they want a full body, and that's how you take a full body picture. No, I, you I... get a selfie stick. Or you right. stand like this, like a normal person. <laughs> Make the effort! <laughs> Get a little tripod, use a timer. Technology but, has advanced, people. But the opportunity to look at your shower and see what kind of shampoo you use. You know. See your counter. See what's happening on your Formica. Yeah, that's something I don't want to happen in my world because my life and everything I own is so messy and cluttered that I don't need to be judged for that shit. Right. Yep. All the bottles are going off of a corner before somebody takes a picture of that bathroom. All right. Okay, so. Bye-bye, Zach. Come back, Zach. Bye-bye, Zach. Fuck you, Zach. I... No, this is a pick again. <laughs> well, I mean, again, that's... <laughs> I just... I think that the thing is, is, is I don't have... It's not true. I... In my experience, I have very little tolerance for early reader kind of the stuff that is clearly designed for children to read. Um, but there are good stuff there. Like there are some good short things that have phonetical ease um, that I definitely can get behind. But I notice that there's not a lot of effort put into early reader stuff. And I think that yeah. that's disappointing. That's the thing that like pisses me off the most. Like if I'm going to read three words on a page make them fun make yeah. you enjoy the story make it a you know? fun sound and then, effect and sometimes it's just a snoresville i mean again there are those oscar nominated dads who who can put in all the the songs and can put in like things that's great that's great awesome but yeah, i'm not with uh, i'm not i'm doing... tired yeah do it do it for me 
<laughs> All right. Okay, next up we have got The Cat Came Back by Bill Slavin. Um, he was Canadian, by the way. Fun factoid. And our YouTuber here is Chrysandra Butler. Old Mr. Johnson had troubles of his own. He had a yellow cat that wouldn't leave his home. Okay, Cassandra gets gold stars all around for being amazing. That's some shit. That is that is some talent. Because she is singing this book. And I love... Can we go back to the... Is there possible to go back to like look at the... Yeah. This is a yellow cat. This cat... He's got a straw! He's sipping he's out of his... Yeah, he's kibble. sipping out of his soda. He's got... like he, Mr. Johnson brought him... He's got a TV food. set up. Yeah, he's living the life. Yeah, you can see there's, yeah, there's kibble and cat leave? food and milk, which we've already established is not for cats, but whatever. I wouldn't leave if I had all that. <sighs> he's, like, He's comfy! You, you have a problem, Mr. Johnson, because you keep giving him shit. Why would he not leave? I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah, he's he's got the life. That wouldn't leave his home. He tried and he tried to give the cat away. He found an ocean liner going far and far away. But... That is so sad. He put him on an ocean liner? He bought him a ticket. That's excessive. You just paid for Did your you cat to have that house? vacation. Did you not see that house? I mean... This poor cat. He's waving at... It's like, bye, cat. A guy, though. Right? Who's got the cat with him? It, it, it's hard to, hard to tell, but it looks like, yeah. That there's yeah. a person holding the cat up there. And he tried to give it to those kids, and that mom was like, fuck no, we're not taking that cat. But there's... Yeah. I mean, that guy seemed like he was pretty committed to taking the cat. Because he clearly bought him a ticket and was like, oh, "You can have this cat if you get on the, if you get on this ocean liner. If you take this cat, you can get on this ocean liner." Clearly, the problem is is he is, must have bought a return ticket. Yeah. Going far and far away, but the cat came back the very next day. The cat came back. They thought he was a goner, but the cat came back. He just wouldn't stay away. Man. Man. That cat is living his best life. The next day he got back. So that it means was a short that trip. Had, that means he committed some serious offenses for the ocean liner to send him back. They send in like a, a, a chopper to remove him. Oh, yeah. He's so cute like, though. He's so cute. In the buffet kind of just, situation well maybe cats weren't even allowed maybe like he's trying he's got this sign up no <laughs> what the fuck is he doing here? there's no milk today cat don't even come in here but the cat's like fuck you i know you're lying i know you no, got my he's, sweetness he's telling the milkman that he doesn't need milk today because he doesn't too. have a fucking cat anymore yeah he didn't give milk to cats yeah, yeah all yeah. of these things are true all true he's got a camera yes, he bought a camera yes, and he bought okay. luggage sorry Mr. Johnson gave the cat to a man in a balloon. He said, please take this cat and leave it on the moon. Okay, this is animal abuse right here. Take this cat and leave it on the moon. Oh, Mr. Johnson, I don't think you understand what a hot air balloon guy does. <laughs> he doesn't he go doesn't to the go moon. He doesn't go to the fucking moon, you weirdo. You want him to try to toss him at the moon? Like, it's not going to happen. Oh my gosh. This Which is... is actually why the cat comes back the next day, because clearly this man in the air balloon was like, uh, no. Okay, dude, whatever. He like, gets up, he comes back down, he's like, and have a nice day, cat. Yeah, Not do what you want. In the moon. Why did that happen? So like, he didn't make it to the moon, and apparently he fell out and landed in a tree. Well, that fucking cat got told, hey, take me to 
take this thing to a moon. And he's like, fuck he's no! Like, I don't want to die. No! So he clearly climbed up and punctured the balloon. And this guy, he's not dead. He got I mean, his. The song kind of sounded like he was dead, but he's in the he's tree. He's fine. Okay. I'm sure he's found before it's too late. No one wants to say, but the cat came, came back. back. The very next day, the cat came back. <laughs> they thought he was a goner, but the cat came back. Oh my gosh, moon cheese! We get to the moon, which is a little weird because that means aliens came to get him. And as he was going, he was like, by the way, and like sent the guy... Fuck you, balloon man. You're getting yours. I know. He fucked up the balloon just, just cause being petty about it. Well, thank goodness these aliens came and helped his cat out because they were like, why? Why did someone abandon this poor, helpless animal on the moon where there's no air or atmosphere or anything? Let's give him some cheese and send him home. He's got a full outfit, though, so either that was now. Tesla or Elon Musk. Maybe the cat just jumped into that Tesla and was like, oh, here's an outfit. <laughs> that is a Tesla, actually. <laughs> He's just wearing Thank that. you, Elon Musk. You did one thing right. Yeah, that's about it. He just wouldn't stay away. Mr. Johnson gave the cat to a fellow heading west. He said the cat's a present for the one you love the best. Okay, you know what's really a terrible idea? Giving cats as gifts. Don't do it. Because I bet Don't what happens is that the one you love the best doesn't want this cat, and that's how this cat turns up back home. Is he grabbing him by the neck and, like, throwing him on a train? Um, yeah. I think so. Let's see. Yeah, he's just, like, the train's pulling out, and he's like, get the fuck out of here. Take this stupid like, cat. Like, there to, like, have the conversation while the train was idle. He just is like... Get out of here. Hey! Take this cat. Take it. Hey, man! Cat! Have it! Bite this. How could you not take that cat? Because it's, it's not going to go well if you let go. You gotta <laughs> grab that cat. Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh. For either of them, really. the train hit the track. Then it bounced and jumped the rail. Not a person stayed around to tell the gruesome tale. What the fuck? Okay, Amtrak is fucking pissed. You got way too close to the train. It derailed. Bitches died. Everyone is dead. This prairie dog's just watching. There was a horrible tragedy. Horrible. This is like um that Bruce Willis movie. God, which one? Unbreakable. Uh, oh, oh yeah. Where he's on the train and he's the only survivor because he, him. He, he's unbreakable. I, I love it. <sighs> What's the, this cat's Bruce Willis. The cat came back the very next day. The cat came back. They thought he was a goner, but the cat came back. He just wouldn't stay away. I love it. I do. But he came back on a on a a carriage, a stagecoach, yeah. if you will. Stagecoach, very specifically. And look, these fuckers are having a yard sale to sell all their cat stuff, and he's like, "Nope, we're back, bitch. we're doing this. We're back." He's got a little cowboy hat on. It looks like he's got like an old western doctor's bag. This cat's got money. <laughs> Always coming back with luggage and shit. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, my and cat. This cat enjoyed the like a full twenty four hours. I feel like whenever this cat gets tried, uh, gets punted somewhere, he easily resolves everything in about ten fifteen minutes. But then spends the twenty four hours being like, I'm just gonna try and play out. I'm gonna like do a little tourism. Like, I have never you know. had a cat bring me anything other than dead animals. So this is it just... ain't anyone else. That bag actually is probably full of dead animals. <laughs> That's true. He's like, here's all these mouse heads. Don't worry, I'm going to put them in your bed later. Fucking prairie dogs for you. Nah. Meh. And rattlesnakes. He just wouldn't stay away. The cat was now the father <gasps> oh, Jesus. of a family of his own. They lived with Mr. Johnson 
till there came a cyclone. Oh, They've been Jesus. with this cat this whole time and they never got him neutered? First of all, we talked about this before. You shouldn't have a cat unless it's neutered. <sighs> this is terrible. That is too many cats. That is like that box amount of cats that we were talking about. Oh my gosh, that's... Duh! This is what happened. Oh my god, that's what happened. They all just look just like him, and they're just all just sitting on the chair eating kibble with their with their family. This is the cutest Mr. Johnson cat family keeps ever. Giving him fucking food. Well, Mr. Johnson's a douche. I hate you, Mr. Johnson. You're the worst cat owner in the world. Well, he cut it. Look at all that cat food. It's yeah. all the house of pots. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> I can't! I can't even deal. The air was full of kittens! <laughs> this is terrible! Look, there's a kitten in the broken TV! There's a kitten all tied up in yarn! I'm safe, though. Everyone's okay. Cats are okay. We don't know that! The cat can't be found! This is terrible! I don't like Ter this! <sighs> it's not okay. Let's see what happens. The cat, the <gasps> cat, the very next day, the cat came back. They thought he was a goner, but the cat came back. <laughs> He just wouldn't stay away. He took a cab! <laughs> okay, Mr. Johnson clearly gave this kid, cat the, his credit card. Something. Because he's paying for taxis and shit now. Like, this is all on Mr. Johnson's time. This, Mr. Johnson has codependency issues. It's like, I can't get rid of this cat, except for I feed it, I clothe it, I give it a credit card. It, no. I take care of its family. Oh my goodness. He just wouldn't stay away. Oh, it's got the music he in it. just wouldn't stay away. So uh, I guess Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson accepted he his... He trying to get rid of the cat, but he just kept coming back. I guess Mr. Johnson accepted his fate here? Yeah. And look at that, they're scratching his chair, all this shit. But at least he's sitting with them and watching TV together. Right? I think this needs to be appropriately told where, like, he's just scratched to death and, like, they take bites out of him. I... They leave... <sighs> At the end, they eat him. Because he dies. You know, I feel like I want to give this YouTuber two thumbs up all the way. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That singing was nice. Delightful. But this book and this animal abandonment and lack of responsible pet ownership makes me want to bring back book burning um, and makes me want to say, please, for the love of all that is good, pick again. <laughs> I would not, not allow a, this book in my home. This is not okay. Not good. The funny part is, is that like, I remember this song because it was on an animation and it, like I had lots of very happy feelings about it, but I don't think I really paid attention to the fact. I mean, I just, I understand that Mr. Johnson was desperate, didn't want this cat here and it just kept coming back no matter what he did. But I think that's about all I got out of it. I didn't quite realize the amount of abuse that these animals. Yeah. I mean, I thought that that lovely song was like the cat was gone. And we were worried that it was lost, but Oh, it's okay. It came back. Not like we tried well, to punt kick this cat and it keep coming back. Well, there's also the reality that this cat may not actually exist. Mr. Johnson just could be a crazy person. Yeah, Mr. Johnson is completely hallucinating this cat. I don't know. What, all I know is that, no. Pick again. This book and this animal mistreatment is not having a place in my life or my house. Um, Pretty songs aside, no. These are not messages that it is okay to share. There are animal shelters, people. You can take your pet to them yeah. to be rehomed. <laughs> There's logical ways to get rid of this cat. Again, stop feeding it. Stop clothing it. Stop giving it your credit card. Take it to a shelter. Have it neutered. 
Don't get the cat in the first place and let it set up shop, A. But B, yeah, neuter your cat. Take care of your cat. Responsibly we need... rehome your cat. Maybe we <sighs> make an anti-cat came back. Ugh. It's terrible. No. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think again. I, I mean, although I would probably play that video of the lady singing it over and over again. Yeah, it's it's audio only. Audio only. Nice. Maybe she's got other videos where she sings other songs. I mean, there's a lot of songs that we sang in the 80s and the 90s that I, we probably shouldn't do again. So I'm I'm comfortable getting rid of. I, again, there's so much good stuff out there. I'm comfortable shucking something I enjoyed when I was little for something better for the future. Yeah, fuck that. That's just crazy talk. Crazy talk. I don't. I don't appreciate it. I don't need it. I'll not have it. Trish Holland can get bent. Oh, wait, no, that was Trish Holland was the author of the comeback sack. Bill Slavin is the asshole who wrote this one, and um, he did can he get actually bent. write it because the cat came back is like a hundred years old. Well, he wrote this book. I don't. Maybe he just illustrated the book. It's not clear. Yeah, he's Canadian. That much we know. Um, but. Cassandra Butler is rocking it, and I would listen to her sweet songs anytime. Hell yeah. I think that is a no brainer. All right. We up for another one. We've got Back to Earth with a Bump, which is a Twinkle original and doesn't appear to have an author. Um, and this YouTuber is Miss Shannon's class. It's evening and Hal needs to go up to bed. He brushes his teeth and he brushes his head. Okay, that's some weird phrasing. Yeah, it's evening and Hal needs to go up to bed. He brushes his teeth and he brushes his head. Hair? He brushed his hair. He did not brush his head. It's evening and Hal needs to go to bed up the stairs. He brushes his teeth. He brushes his hairs. Yeah. Come on, bitch. You not that hard. You could have written this. Seriously. Well, all right. Okay. <laughs> Next. The big hands on 12 and the small hands on 8. Quick, into your bedroom. It's really quite late. Is it? Ah, is it quite late? It's 8 o'clock. We're learning to help. Uh, now, how many times have I said, oh my god, it's late. Come on. Let's get to bed. Let's get to bed. Come on. But if you're like in... Yeah, you're not even in your bedroom, so I guess I am probably rushing people along if it's 8 o'clock and you're not in your bed yet. Because there clearly needs to be other shit that's happening. There's the rest of this book, so. Yeah. What time is that? We discussed that that is 8 o'clock. Don't give me your commentary, right, YouTuber. It's 8 o'clock. Damn it. You shush. Hal closes his curtains and turns out the light. Curls under his blanket and snuggles up tight. That sounds nice. But just when he's starting to snuffle and snore. Uh oh. Uh oh. That kid has sleep apnea. Someone needs to get him tested. His small bed takes off the ground with a roar. Dang it, I hate it when he that happens. Seem happy about that. He's like, I'm trying to go to sleep. And this fucking bed just blew me away. Who gave me a rocket bed? What is this nonsense? The monster, it's Elon Musk again. The stuffy does not look amused either. This is his kid. He's like, this... fuck, dad. Poor little stuffy is just like, what is happening? Another Tesla bed? Dad. Come on. Come on. This does not have airbags, I'm pretty sure. I don't even, there's not even a seatbelt here. A whoosh, and it's out of the window they go. His house soon becomes just a dot down below. It's traumatizing, really. Yeah, I would be fucking freaked. He soars through the clouds and the dark moonlit sky. 
and straight into space in the blink of an eye. Is no one else concerned about the fact that you can't breathe in space and this kid's just sitting Cut in bed? Cut up, breathe in space! And he's just like, what up? There's nothing holding him to the bed. He's just going to be floating out. No way he's going to survive re-entry. There are so many oh problems with God. this. It's Earth calling Hal. Can you hear me? Come in. Who knows bed talks? You. When can you begin? You're loud and you're clear. Now just tell me the plan. Please give me my mission. I'll do what I can. Get me off this fucking bed, sun, man. And it's gone from the sky. It's vanished completely, and we just don't know why. Because it's nighttime, you dumb fucks. What is wrong You're with these people? You're a scientist, you should know. You built this bed, you can't tell me that it's nighttime? Come on, man. Revolving around the earth. Sun. Okay. Just... Whatever. <laughs> okay, agrees Hal with a nod of his head. I'll track down the sun. In my space traveling bed. How's this kid supposed to get a good night's sleep? Choice. What's that up ahead? Hal squints hard, hard as he sees a shape that is pale and all round like a cheese. Hmm. What do you think that is? No commentary, YouTuber. There are craters and mountains and dust that is gray. It's the moon, you dumbass. Could this be the sun that we see in the day? No, it's the moon. The illustration's yellow. It's the Not moon. Gray. It's it's the moon. That's actually a funny thing because what will happen is that you'll ask them like, "Is that the moon?" and the kids will go, "No." No, I guess you ask them if is it the sun, right? Oh, sorry, is that the sun? <laughs> like, yep, yeah, but it is the moon. The kids aren't dumb. They know what the moon is. Maybe. Give or take. They should Maybe know. they've never seen... Maybe you need to step off your privilege horse. Maybe people have never seen the moon before. I guess if you live in the, the center part of the earth and your well, kids go to bed at 8 o'clock, always... Also, if there's a lot of light um, pollution... There is not that much light pollution anywhere. P children in Tokyo can see the moon. I don't know. Why don't you ask them? <laughs> but I'm pretty sure people along the equator, if they're always going to bed at 8, they might never see the moon because it hasn't come out yet. Google that shit. There's also the Alaska that's like daytime for... But then it's also nighttime for the same periods. Wait, Alaska's nighttime, it's... um. Sweden, somewhere else that's night, daytime all the time. I don't know. I mean, up at the top of the earth, it's either day all the time or night all the time. Yeah. But it swaps. Iceland. There's no, no. place on earth where it's always nighttime. That does not <laughs> exist. I'm sorry. Or where it's always daytime. <laughs> okay. But, you know, good try. Good try. <laughs> Pick again. Yeah. No way, chuckles Hal with a shake of his head. I know what that is, and he stands on his bed. Don't stand Sit up. down. Sit down. First of all, you're in space. There's just no mistaking that sphere is the moon. I see it each night from so, my bed in dumb. my room. That's what's up. We must find the sun, Hal commands with a jump, before we go straight back to Earth with a bump. Sit down. Then I know I know what the sun does, and you cannot be that close to the sun if you're going to find it. Uh, uh, it's not going to go well for you. It's not going to go well. Never mind that you're already asphyxiated. Frozen yeah. to death. You're frozen. Yeah, you're about as blue as that space right there. Which is black. But... I must not give up. It's important to try. I'll keep up my quest for the sun in the sky. Hal, you got it coming. What's that up ahead? Hal jumps on his up as he spies some bright twinkling shapes far ahead in the sky. Hmm, what are those? They sparkle and dazzle. They glow with white light. Could this be the sun that we lost in the night? Now, joke's on you because those are somebody's sons. 
Ha, bitch, ha. You get close enough, and yeah, that's what you're gonna find. Mm hmm, mm hmm. What do you think? Oh, no, giggles Hal with a wink of his eye. I know those small diamonds high up in the sky. You're in the sky. Those beautiful twinkling space dots are stars. I'm perfectly certain that that that's what they are. But no one's explained to him that the sun is a star. We must find the sun, Hal commands with a jump, before we go straight back to Earth with a bump. Can we just have an anti-series where we just take these books that we hate and we just like we just write the antithesis of it exactly the same try to get the same illustrator just we'll just replace know. the words we'll just photoshop our own little <laughs> do you think that they're gonna hit us with copyright strikes on that one i don't know i call I fair use it's... i call fair use right we'll do it I must keep on trying, although it is hard. I've done well already to find all these stars. It's the wrong fucking star, dumbass. What's that up ahead? Hal stands up on his tiptoes. No! To see a vast shape that is bright red and glows. Good. What do you think that is? Fucking Mars already? There are mountains and valleys and deserts so dry. Could this be the sun that is gone from the sky? No. Dr. McConaughey would say nay. <laughs> it can't be, says Hal, as he scratches his head. I know what that is. It's so round and so red. It's perfectly clear that this planet is Mars. I've heard it's the planet that's found next to ours. That's true. Well, we Mercury is also the next to us. Hal with a jump. Before we go straight back to Earth with a bump. Maybe Mercury's next. This mission is hard. It's a difficult test. But if I have tried, then I've given my best. Al looks back at Earth and then... What does he see? Earth, I hope. The planet is moving. It's turning around. It's slowly rotating without any sound. Al zooms round to find where his bedroom has gone. And what does he find? He discovers the sun. Holy shit. There it was all along. Really the biggest thing in this area. The sun doesn't budge, but the earth moves instead. Cal works it all out as he clings to his bed. Way to go, Cal. Way to go. You figured it out. When night comes, we see the bright moon in the sky, but in daytime, the sun is the thing that we spy. They sent you on a fool's errand. I knew I could do it, if only I tried. Hal smiles with delight as he looks at the sky. I did not give up, and I did not give in, and I found the sun, Hal shouts with a grin. whoop de fucking do The mystery is solved, now his mission's complete. Al's suddenly tired and in need of some sleep. Too bad it's dawn now. He soars to his country, his town, then his street, and straight through the window, head first and then feet. And back in his bedroom, he snuggles down tight and drifts off to sleep for the rest of the night. As An hour and a half. As the starts to rise, Al <laughs> wakes up with a jump and finally comes back He needs to, to sniff a bump. With a bump. Yeah, because he's not going to be able to, to function for the rest of the day. Hal, I really dislike you. I really dislike that somebody gave you this stupid-ass advice. They were like, hey, the sun's gone. And it's like, no, it, no. All of that was just avoidable. You could have just been like, just wait eight hours. It's fine. Like he's never experienced a day before? Yeah. Listen. Hal's a, a young, impressionable person. The person we need to blame is whatever's coming out of that, that bed. Elon Musk. Yeah, Musk bed. Fuck Fucking no Musk, Musk bed. bed. Pick again. <laughs> Pick again due to Musk bed. <laughs> I I mean, sometimes things, kind of, condescending books kind of, yeah, they uh, irritate me. I mean, I, I understand that, like, even the rhyming actually irritated me. So yeah, it's it's kind of a, a it's a pick again. I'm not. 
I'm not impressed. Thank you. Yeah, Thank maybe you if now. somebody had sung it like the last one. I mean, someone did sing that came back and it didn't call, so. It didn't In fact, fix the story, you're right. Yeah, didn't we, we, all three, we were, did four, five books? We've done four. And we only had one that we, that won our hearts? Yeah. Cute monsters at the beginning. We liked. That was a fucking great book. That's why we did this, though. For no, you. No. You know what to avoid. So you don't have to do this. Go get that book. What's it called again? Oh, shit. What is it called again? That first one. The Hungry Thing Returns. Yeah. Go get The Hungry Thing Returns. And actually, like, go see the, go get the first book. I, I, I haven't seen it, though. I guess we're banking too hard on that one. But I'm, I'm kind of interested. We've got The Hungry there. Thing and The Hungry Thing Goes to a Restaurant. What? Yeah. When do we need to look into those and see? Do we want to do... We could, we could pursue it by doing, like, a restaurant... One Ooh, next we do, time. We could do restaurants. Restaurants and eating out so that we can pr wonder what it'll be like if we'll ever get to do it again. Can we yeah, ever we go may out actually again? not be very good at judging this because maybe we don't remember how it's like to be. What in are a they like? Anymore. If it doesn't have a patio, I can't go to it. It's too cold to eat outside. Uh, too many people here. Where's your mask? It's my life. It's my life. Ugh. Well, th we're just about ready two hours. I think we're probably good to call it. We had another book, but I don't know that we need it. I think I think we've, we've done enough to ourselves. Elon Musk has if, done enough. If it, were, if it were to pick again, if you think that it's not going to be worth our time, then I, I totally understand it. Well, we don't know because neither of us has watched the video. That's true. But, you know. Okay. We can, we can cut it out. It's I got shit hours. to do. I got real exciting stuff coming up in my life. I have to prepare for a road trip to Nebraska in the morning. You are you are clocked out. You're like, you know what? F all this. I'm getting a dog. Like that's I'm got getting I'm adopting a dog and I've got a to-do list this long and I haven't done any of it because we spent an hour troubleshooting problems earlier. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. But, you know, all right, everybody. It's all right. Thank you so much for watching. Remember that if you don't want to read that book, you don't feel bad. You can just hide it. And then get your kid to pick again. Hell yes, yo. <laughs> pick yeah. again. Pick again. Thanks, guys. Thank you all for watching. We will be back again next week. Um, check our schedule. We'll update it I because I don't know what day or time yet. But we'll figure it out. We will be back every week from here on oh. up. <laughs> yeah. We're not giving up on you. No. We love you. So hang with us. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.